Hey everybody, it's uh, Jeff Douglas with Salesforce and Trailhead, and today I'm going to show you how you can use the Salesforce Data Cloud Connector for MuleSoft's AnyPoint platform to lay, load data into Data Cloud using the Ingestion API. Now specifically, we're going to stream new records added to a database into a data lake object. So when you create a new data stream in Data Cloud, you're being presented with a bunch of connectors for the MuleSoft's AnyPoint Exchange. Now that we're going to use these connectors to actually get our data from a database into Data Cloud. And we'll be using the Salesforce Data Cloud Connector. It has a lot of functionality, but like I said, we're going to just concentrate on using the Ingestion API to stream records in from a database. So here's our agenda. First, we're going to configure the Ingestion API with the schema from our database. Now, the Ingestion API provides a RESTful interface that you can use to load data in Data Cloud. It offers both a bulk and a streaming pattern, but like I said, we're going to be streaming JSON data from our database into Data Cloud. And next, we're going to create a data stream for our connector. And this also creates an associated data lake for all of our records. And we'll also need to create a connected app that the MuleSoft connector will use to request an access token and make the actual API calls. And finally, we'll create a Mule application, we'll configure this data cloud connector, and then we'll build a flow that calls the ingestion API when new records are added to the database. Okay, so first thing we need to do is set up our ingestion API. We'll go in the data cloud setup, and we're gonna go down here to ingestion API. And we're going to go ahead and create a new one, and I'll just give it some name. We're going to look at events for my company, Goat Mowers. So, and we have, like I said, we have a lot of records in database. So this is what our database looks like. We have a goat ID, the name, that we're going to rate these goats, of course, and we've got a created date. So here's what our schema looks like. Um, this corresponds to what we're going to do to upload for the schema. So the schemas that get uploaded for this ingestion API are based on YAML. So this is my goat ratings YAML file. We have our ID, which is a number, the goat type, the goat name, which all corresponds to this. Let's over here. We'll see how these correspond in the schema for the database into my YAML file. Um, you see for the created date, it's a string type, and it's uh, formatted as date time. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to upload the schema. And there's my schema right here. And you can see this correlates to what we just saw a second ago. It read that YAML file based on our schema. And let's go ahead, go ahead and create that. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And then our files uploaded successfully. And now we'll go back over here and we'll look at our data stream. We'll set up a data stream now. So here is the data stream. We're going to use the Ingestion API. I'm going to choose that. And then we can look at the Ingestion API, look at the events. Here's our source API. And we've got the GOAT ratings. We're going to hit next. And now we're going to choose, and this we're going to choose engagement. We don't have any, engagement is kind of like the data you stream. So we're going to have ratings that are associated. So we're going to choose engagement. If you want to do profile, that would be some information about a certain contact, perhaps. And now we have engagement. We have our primary key, so we know what records are coming in. And we have a date time field that is, is required when you we use an engagement. So we're going to say create a date. And then we're going to, there's our data streams be deployed. And you can have multiple data streams in here at the same time. We're going to create different objects. And then we get our, our data stream was deployed. So there's our name for our data lake that we're going to actually be streaming records into. You can see these are the fields here we've got in here. So we got our IDs, all the fields that came over from the schema of the database. OK, so now we need to go and create the connected app so that way any point platform can talk to Data Cloud and access token and call the API. So we'll go to the App Manager. And I believe I already have a connected app. Yeah, we'll use this one. That we don't have to wait for a new one to spin up and everything. So, We've got our connected app here. Let's scroll down. You can see I'm using the data API scope, refresh token, and then I've selected all the CDP or data cloud OAuth scopes for this app here. Let's see, anything else on here? Looks pretty straightforward. Okay, so now we have to go and manage, and I think I have to set up that way the admin pre approves users. Yes, so I have to really have to create a um, permission set. And I believe I have a permission set already set up here. Let's see. Uh, 
yeah, there we go. Uh, the Anypoint CDP connector is our permission set. And I believe I only have assigned to this the connected app. Yeah, there we go. This is CDP connector app and it should be assigned to me. There we go. And it is. Okay, great. So now we are all set. We'll start working on the Mule app next. All right, so we'll jump over to Anypoint Studio here. It's our Eclipse Space tool running locally. We're going to create a new Mule project. We'll call it, let's give it some name, I don't know, um, Data Cloud Anypoint Demo, I'll say. And we're going to just let it choose the Mule 4 runtime. We're going to put in the default location, all that good stuff. And now here's our palette here. We can start uh, dragging things on here to get started. So let's first create a listener. We're going to do just a simple post to get this working. So we'll drag a listener on here. And then see, I got to configure the listener. All right, we're going to name this listener post and kind of the path name. And now we need to actually configure this listener. So we're going to listen on 8081. Let's make sure nothing else using this right now. Looks like we're good to go here. All right. If I hit the right button, that'd be great. Okay, so now we got the listener working and let's put our path in here. We're gonna use for the path, we're gonna use insert and the source name and the object name as part of the path. All right. So next we need to, um, let's start getting our CDP stuff going here for data cloud. All right, so we're gonna add a module in here. We'll add the Salesforce CDP module. And then you can see it has a lot of different actions you can have in here. We're going to, let me see if I can find this one. It's probably, yeah, it's the very bottom one here, I think. Uh, yeah, streaming object, insert. We're gonna drag that into our flow. And now we need to add our connected app information in here. So let's create our connector configurator. And we can use different ways to connect. There's um, the OAuth scope for JWT. We're gonna not use that because it takes too long to set up this, this part here. We're just gonna use the simple username and password flow. But in production, you should use the JWT flow, but we're gonna use this just as easier and it takes less time in this demo. So we get our consumer ID, consumer secret thread added in there. And then we need our my username for this org, my password. And then we're going to use login.salesforce.com as the audience URL. And let's test that connection out. Bingo. Okay. That's successful. All right. So next thing is, let's go ahead and uh, give some of our room here. We're going to go and configure this now here. So with the source API name is our ingest, ingestion API name. So we have, we're going to be getting these of course from the URL itself. So when we do the post, it's going to pick that up from the URL, URI parameters. So okay, so we use the source name and the object name. Of course, that's part of the listener you can see right there above as well. So let me save that. Get this down here a little bit more now so we get that out of the way here. And we're going to start this up. All right, so I'm gonna wait for this to start up, may take a minute or two. I'll probably just pause this. All right, you can see, so now our application is up and running. It's running on port 8081. And we're gonna go ahead and let's see, look at our data streams real quick here. No records in there. Let's look at Data Explorer. We're gonna go look at our data lake object. We'll get our goat range at the very bottom here. And let's see. No records in here. Okay, all right. So now let's go ahead and get Postman up here. So we're gonna we're gonna post to our local home, local machine that's running this application right now to the Goat Events and the Goat Ratings. And you can see there is my data is coming across, and this looks like, of course, what I see in the database. So we're gonna ID one hundred. We're gonna give it uh, the Goat ID, the Goat name, and a rating. Let's go ahead and post this. You can see we get a 200 accepted equals true. 
And now we'll wait a few minutes for that data to be loaded in the data cloud. And once we're back, let's go back into the Data Explorer, refresh this. And there we go, there's our record that we just posted. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create our flow that listens for database inserts. All right, so let's add a new module here. We'll add the database module. And then we want the, let's see, we want the on table row. So let's go ahead and drag that into a new flow, if I can grab it. All right, so there's that. Let's get some more space here to work with. All right, so the first thing we need to do, set up our database connection. So we're going to use, let's see, we're going to use the MySQL connector. And we're going to get my credentials here and paste those in. And I'm going to delete this database connected app as soon as we're done here. There's our ports, 3306, our user, and finally get the password and the database. All right, let's go ahead and connect, test this connection, see what we got here. All right. Test successful, all right, here we go. All right, so now let's see, let's finish this connection part here. We're gonna get the table, and refresh this. Here we go, so we want the, let's see where to find this at. Uh, goat ratings, here we go. In the watermark, we're gonna use, uh, let's see, this to refresh. Come on, one more time here. There we go, there's our ID, and for the ID column, we're gonna use the ID again. All right, let me save that. Looks like we got our database set up there. All right, let's see, the next thing we need to do is, let's see, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get the data that comes off the new record, and we need to transform that and get it into the state that uh, that data cloud wants. So it's going to be a JSON and we're going to have an object here and the object is going to have a key named, uh, let's see, make this up here, named data. And that's going to be an array and it's going to have, that array is going to contain the payload that comes out of the on table row, which is going to be just one record. So it's going to, we're going to cast it into a, an array. All right, let me save this and let's see. We're going to grab the CDP connector again. We're going to go to the insert objects. Same way. And let's see, I got to configure that real quick again. So the CDP connector is already there. We're going to make this the go to events again. And the object name is going to be the goat rating. And we're going to, of course, the buy is going to be the payload that we just transformed. Let me save that. And let's see, we're gonna go ahead and let's get a logger here and we can kind of see what's coming out on this. This is the response from the insert and we'll just call this, um, we'll just use the default that comes off. We'll save all these and let's go ahead and start our application back up. All right, we're back again. So, okay, so there is our app, we're back up and running. Let's see, you can see all my records are my six records and looks like they all just got inserted. So let's see, here we go. Yep, there they go. Let's start back up again. And you can see, let's see, all these records. Get out of here. There we go. Okay, so there's our records that got inserted. You can see it got 202. The reason phrase is accepted. That's good. So we got all those records that were streamed that were already in the database got inserted into the data lake. All right, so you can see there's a whole bunch of there. Should be like five, I think. All right, so let's keep going here. So now what we wanna do is we wanna have it, we wanna insert a record into this database and see if it shows up in the data lake also. So I got like, I think six records here we can we streamed over here. And looks like about six, yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna copy this row right here. 
paste this in. We'll change the ID. Actually, we'll let it assign the ID. We'll change this rating to two, just so we see it. And then we'll save that. Let's see, there you go. You can see the new record just got streamed over there. It was accepted. So now let's go, let's see, can you see anything? No, not really. So let's go ahead and we'll jump back into the Explorer. Refresh this, nothing's there yet. So give it a few minutes and we'll check back. All right, let's jump back in the Data Explorer. We'll refresh this and there are records. All right, so we've got, uh, let's see, let me pull this database over here. So we've got the six that we streamed earlier. We've got 100 from the post original. And then we got 26, the new one we just added when we inserted a new record. All right, looks great. So let's let's look at the stream here. And we have eight records processed. So there you go. That's how easy it is to use the Salesforce connector for MuleSoft to insert records.